Greetings and salutations, everybody, and welcome to a very special edition of the Canuck Podcast. That's right, it's E3 week, and we're just too damn excited to wait until Sunday to record. So we're coming at you today with uh, talk and info all about the big press conferences that went on yesterday and Nintendo that happened today. So without further ado... Joining me, as per always, is Big Boss. Hello, hello. Big Boss, how are you doing? I'm actually doing pretty good right now. How about you? I'm on top of the world. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, yesterday was a uh, really big day in the uh, land of gaming. Yes, so, it was. Well, uh, might as well start here, going through all the press conferences one by one in the order of what, uh, in the order of which one aired first. All right. Well, I guess I was, was going to introduce today. I guess uh, we'll uh, go right ahead. <laughs> we'll kick things off with Microsoft. Everybody's favorite company at the moment. Well, I know. I right now they are sure thing. Well, we found out we found out some stuff, more stuff about the uh, console. Mm-hmm. particularly the cost of the console. And it'll be retailing it at $499. Kind of expected. Yeah, that's about the price range that uh, we expected, so can't be too upset about that. No. Um, it also appears that they have ignored all the Internet and the rage put out by us angry gamers who are very disappointed. Yeah, I kind of expected them to... They needed to say something. They really yeah. did. And they said, nope, nope, we're, we're not even going to bother with it. We're doing things our way. Mm-hmm. If you don't like that, go buy a PS4. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll get to the PS4 later on. Um, they did reveal one thing that was interesting, and that they're partnering up with Twitch in a way. So that's one positive note. <laughs> Yeah, there's also no more Microsoft points, which... <laughs> Welcome to six years ago. I know, I... Yeah, well, that's good at least. Uh, I, I hated that point system. It was, it was stupid, because, I mean, you couldn't just pay for something for the cost it was. Mm-hmm. You had to buy the points, then you'd always have, like, a few points left over in your wallet. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, what am I going to do with this? Nothing. <laughs> Yeah, you can't even buy an avatar item with, like, 40 points. <laughs> exactly. Ah, but yeah, we got that and that. But let's move into the big things. The games that were shown. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, we'll hey, say, I, which, I mean, hey, look, the Xbox One can actually play games. <laughs> it's not just for TV and sports, after all. Um, or Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we, you know, admittedly, they did get a pretty impressive list of games. I mean, mm-hmm. I will say that, and uh, we'll kick things off. That uh, the trailer was shown for Metal Gear Solid Five, which will be coming to Xbox One and PS4 and the PS4 as well. And the, it looked pretty damn good. I don't. I just actually. I just before recording this, watched the director's cut, mm-hmm. the nine minute, the nine minute version. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> well, Lots. Of... I was gonna Go say, ahead. Well, boss, uh, we know you're a you're probably the biggest Metal Gear Solid fan I know personally. So, uh, give us your thoughts on the game. I think it looks really interesting. Um, the one thing I will say about the trailer though was when they showed Snake riding the horse, I couldn't help but think of Red Dead Redemption, <laughs> uh, which isn't a bad thing per se. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm also, I really don't mind hearing Keeper Sutherland's voice as uh, Big Boss. Mm. I think it actually fits really well. Yeah, I was surprised with that as too. Um, I mean, I really could talk about my hype for Metal Gear Solid Five all day, but overall, I'm just, I continue to really look forward to the game and uh, mm-hmm. really look forward to seeing what Kojima has in store for us with that. Yeah, the... The other characters they kind of showed, too, looked interesting. Yeah. (laughs) Well, one of them more interesting than others, might I say. (laughs) Wow, wow, wow. 
you know it. Um, yeah. Well, but, I mean, that's Metal Gear Solid for you. You always have really interesting characters. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Yep, uh, totally a game I am stoked to play. Might have to finally finish four now. Dude, just, just okay, get off the podcast. Go, go play that right now. <laughs> I can wait. <laughs> well, then, let's keep moving. Um, but. The next game that they showed is one that was originally supposed to be for the 360 and Connect only, and that's Rise, Son of Rome, which looks pretty good. <laughs> it looks, yeah, it looks cool. The gameplay looks really fun to watch. Mm-hmm. But... It looked like all quick time events. Yeah, which I mean, I think God of War did it perfect with the mixing of quick time events and regular combat. Mm-hmm. They had a good balance. Whereas this, I didn't see any regular combat. No, me neither. I saw nothing but quick time events, which admittedly looked spectacular and nice and bloody and fun. Mm-hmm. Very reminiscent of one of my favorite TV shows, Spartacus. Mm-hmm. Um, but I. In that trailer, I can't help but think that uh, the game will get pretty dull pretty fast. <laughs> mm. Yeah, unless it's got a really good story to it. Yeah, I can probably see. Well, I can understand why they went from a controller uh, from the Kinect to a controller to play the game, but in a way, it almost seems like it would be better with the Kinect at this point. Yeah, because the controller seems fairly dumbed down if it's just QTEs. Mm-hmm. But who knows? Maybe we'll see some actual gameplay later down the line. Oh, exactly. I mean, that was just uh, an announcement trailer, so mm-hmm. I'm sure we'll see more to come. Indeed. Now, Big Boss, do you like Rare? I, 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 I do. Are we talking about the, the cookie company? <laughs> Uh, just, just kidding. I, I I do like rare. Well, did I, you? And now, did you play Killer Instinct back in the day? I admittedly no, I didn't. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Well, that ruins my joke. There anyway. goes your joke. I mean, yes, I I totally did. <laughs> well, Killer Instinct is coming back. What? I mean, at first, I mean, I was excited, like, hey, Killer Instinct, this is great. Then more details came out on it. Uh. It's going to be digital only. Well, I mean, almost the, all the Xbox One games are in, in essence. But uh, digital only, it's going to be free to play, but you know, with only one character unlocked, and you have to pay for the rest. Okay. And now it's not going to be made by Rare. It's being made by the developers, I forget their name at the moment, who brought us such great games like the Green Lantern movie tie-in and the Battleship movie tie-in. Wait, Battleship had a movie tie-in? Yes, a game based on a movie based on a game. Sure. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. Ah. This is really disappointing. Yeah. En- enjoy that, Xbox people. Yeah. <laughs> Bringing back an exclude, Yeah, like a great franchise from a great developer only to run it into the ground. Yeah, I can't think of like a worse developer to have given that game to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to make it free to play. I mean, that ruins the fighting game community in a way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's cool to an extent that it's free to play. Mm-hmm. It kind of lets you try it out, but at the same time, I mean, really? Like, I'm not the biggest fan of free-to-play games, just because I feel like we're gamers. We can pay for a good game, right? Yep. So why not make a watered-down game that's free-to-play and make a nice, good game that you have to pay for? Mm-hmm. Uh, a good example of this is uh, Dead or Alive Ultimate. They're coming out with a free-to-play edition as well. But oh, well. there are, I think, four or five characters unlocked at the start. Okay. You have to pay for the rest, and you have to pay for the story, but at least they're giving some variety to it and have <laughs> a full-fledged version aside. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, let's move on to some better better news. Oh, yeah. Wait. 
not really. <laughs> That's uh, later down the road, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> Insomniac got a game announced at the uh, Microsoft press conference. Yeah, this took me by surprise. I oh, know, me too. I mean, Insomniac. You think Insomniac? You think PlayStation? Spyro I mean, the Dragon. <laughs> yeah, and hell, even like uh, Resistance. And the first Infamous. Yeah. No, wait, that was Sucker Punch, wasn't it? I thought the, the first Infamous was Insomniac as well, I believe. The second one was Sucker Punch. Oh, okay, okay. I think. Okay. Uh, I'm going to search that up while you talk, just to make sure I'm right. <laughs> right, but uh, yeah, the new game is called Sunset Overdrive. Looks like a crazy, over-the-top multiplayer shooter. Kind of cartoony. Really cartoony, really. Yeah, I watched a, a trailer for it, and actually one of the top comments says that it basically looks like what you would get if you combine Team Fortress with those Fanta commercials. <laughs> and I'm like, bang, nail hit right on the head. Mm-hmm. It's weird, too, that Insomniac's doing this, because I think they came up for it that they went multi-platform, you know, to bring their games to a wider audience. And now they're going exclusive for Microsoft. Yeah. Makes no sense. Oh, well. You know what, this game, at first I was really nervous, given Insomniac's track record. I was getting upset that I'd, be, like, I'd see this game and be like, oh, crap, now i got to get an Xbox just so I can play this game. Mm -hmm. But after seeing the trailer, I'm like, no, nah, I can do without this. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it'll be cool, and I'm not saying it'll be bad, but it just doesn't look like something I need to have, so... Mm -hmm. And I looked into it, and I was incorrect about Inso uh, Infamous. For some reason, I thought it was done by Insomniac, but <laughs> my mistake. Okay. All right, well, uh, next up here, we got some more details on Forza 5. They showed a car. Sweet. Uh, after that, hey, look, they still support indie developers. They're going to give a game that 60-odd million people have already played. Minecraft. I wonder how Notch feels about this. <laughs> uh, I'm guessing he's saying yay more money, but it probably would have been better if he went to the PS4. Yeah. Big boss? Hmm? Oh, you're still there? Yeah. Can okay. you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You just went there. really quiet there for a second. I thought you uh -oh. lost connection. No, no, I'm still here. Sorry about that. Uh, no, I was just saying how I wouldn't be surprised if at some point we see Minecraft come to the PS4. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. Uh, yeah. But, hey, it's now coming to the Xbox One with bigger maps and other things. Weren't uh, the maps big enough already? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not on the 360 version. Oh, okay. I wouldn't know. PC only for me. Hmm. Ditto. Um... Next up here, uh, we got some more details on Quantum Break. Still really don't know what's going on with that game, but kind of looks cool. <laughs> yeah, I didn't exactly look into this, so I can't comment on this too much. Mm. Yeah, I kind of I kind of skimmed through the Microsoft press conference, and this was one of the things I didn't really look a, look into a lot. So, but. What I saw, eh, I'm sure Remedy will do a great story, and I look forward to playing it on the PC. Yeah. Uh, next up here, uh, the developer, Swerny? Swerny? Swerry? Swerry. Oh, I don't the, guy, know. the guys who made a Deadly Premonition is uh, making a episodic adventure game for the Xbox One. Hmm. That look what, cool. Yeah. Episodic stuff. Mm -hmm. Look what, uh, what's it called? Kick started. Walking Dead got going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, then we got to see Microsoft's version of uh, basically Little Big Planet. And that's uh, Project Spark. And it uses the Kinect and tablets. I was watching this and I'll admit. I was a bit impressed by this. Yeah, I didn't look into this. So. Basically, you can make your own type of world, 
make your own games, pretty much, is, is what they said. Pretty much a little big planet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly like you said. <laughs> mm-hmm. It, it does look cool. I will give it that, but at the same time, uh, I won't be paying $500 for an Xbox and $500 for a tablet and probably $60 for the game in order to play it. Yeah. I will say, though, that this would be a good game. I could see the Kinect and tablets working really well for this game. Mm-hmm. I will say that much. Yeah. Uh, then we got the reveal of Dead Rising 3. Mm, more zombies. And... Did you watch the trailer for this one? <laughs> I did not watch this one either. I didn't watch much of Microsoft, to be fair. Uh, I watched it, and it looks really nice. I mean, graphically, it's amazing. But my main problem with it, it mm-hmm. looks like they took all the humor out of the game. Because yeah. it looked gritty and realistic. I guess that's cool in some ways for some games, but not a Dead Rising game, mm-hmm. which, uh, uh, I mean, given the history of the Dead Island franchise, it was always a totally effed up kind of dark humor, which is very prevalent, which I I really, well, part of me, a part of me loved Dead Rising, but another part of me hated it, because it's fucking hard and stupid with a stupid time limit. Mm-hmm. If you want to piss me off, include a time limit in your game. <laughs> then I'm going to fucking hate you. Like, seriously. <laughs> Don't ever do that. <laughs> okay. Over. Yeah. But yeah, when I think of Dead Rising, I think of, uh, you know, a zombie game that meets Saints Row. Something that's not going to be serious at all. Oh, yeah. Like the, like the clown with the chainsaws. Yeah, and whacking a zombie with a dildo. Oh, God, I forgot about that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, it looks good. Uh, Hopefully it comes to PC as well, because they have said it is an exclusive for the Xbox One. Yeah. For now, anyway. For now. A lot of things were exclusives. Mm -hmm. Look what's happened. Yeah, Mass Effect, for example. Yeah. Oh, I know. They said Mass Effect 1 will never come to the PS3. Guess what, guys? Guess what just happened? All right. So uh, after that, we got to see another amazing game, The Witcher 3. Which I regrettably didn't watch this trailer either. <laughs> so I am looking forward to it. I say that I am looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. It was a, a sweet game. So uh, Witcher 3, with its more open-worldness, should be even sweeter. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks phenomenal. I'm surprised that uh, CG Pro- CD Project Red was actually on the Microsoft stage with this, especially since the developer really, really hates DRM. <laughs> really? Yep. They have really come out against it multiple times. <laughs> well, chances are Microsoft paid them a certain amount of money to appear mm. on their side of things. Did I ever? They're a Swedish developer, I believe, or an Austrian one or something. Uh, yeah, somewhere over in Europe. Uh, but, uh, Denmark, right? Norway, something like yeah. that. Yeah. I'm not sure if I mentioned this on a previous episode of the Canuck podcast, but apparently when President Obama went to what, whatever country they're from as a, on some sort of diplomatic trip, mm-hmm. they were, he was in a, he was given a gift pack of, like, things from the country, mm-hmm. and in that gift pack included a copy of The Witcher 2. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's a little, little interesting tidbit that not everyone might know about The Witcher. Nice. Um, then, of course, one of the bigger things that they showed, a new trailer of uh, there was somebody wearing a cloak walking through what appeared to be a desert area. And like Tatooine. Yeah, exactly. Like, is this Star Wars? Is this new Fallout game? Which, I mean, it could have been by the looks of it. That's true. But it went on a little bit, then the ground opened up, and this weird spaceship robot thing came up. (laughs) Yeah. And then, of course, the uh, figure's hood went back, and lo and behold, it's Master Chief. Sweet. One of the good things about the Microsoft 
Xbox, I will say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess so. I've never been much of a Halo fan, but, yeah. I, I enjoy Halo. I will say that this is one game that has me interested. Uh, it's definitely the Xbox game I'm most interested in. Mm-hmm. But it all comes down to, can one game make me buy a console? Hmm. I highly doubt it. <laughs> I guess I'm just going to have to find a friend who is stupid enough to buy an Xbox and go over to his house and play it on his account or my account on his Xbox or if I'm one of his ten people who can play the game or something. I'm not sure how it works. <laughs> Nobody is at this point. Yeah, either way, yeah. Uh, new Halo coming in 2014. Safe to assume... Uh, around probably November, December 2014. That's the usual release date for Halos. Mm-hmm. And then finally, Microsoft wrapped up with Call of No. They wrapped up with Titanfall, the new game from, uh, the first game, actually, from Respawn. I didn't look into Titanfall, so I don't know about it. Oh, disappointing, because it actually looks pretty good. It's mm. a, a first-person shooter with uh, mech suits. Oh, mech suits? Yep, where you can jump into mech suits freely and jump out, stuff like that. Okay. It actually looks really good, and I honestly can't wait to play it on the PC. <laughs> <laughs> because they did confirm that it's coming to Xbox 360, Xbox One, and the PC. Oh, well, I could probably just get it from my 360 then. Yeah. <laughs> or my PC, either way. Yeah. Uh, What's his name? Uh, Don Metric. They're, they showed an interview on GT today, and they questioned him about the, uh, you know, the internet backlash and the always online thing. And he had one response for that. It was like, "Well, for those who want to play offline, that we have a solution for that. It's called the 360." <laughs> <laughs> oh, such an asshole. Anyways. Let's uh, move on to the next press conference. And mm-hmm. that's uh, the first publisher press conference, EA. Yeah. Who wasn't as bad as I thought they might be. I know. Did you watch this one? No, I didn't watch any of the press conferences, just the trailers. <laughs> I spent yesterday playing Tomb Raider. Oh, nice. Can you blame me? <laughs> no, no, I can't. Actually, I kind of can. It's E3. You're supposed to watch these things. You're a game. Uh, I have so little free time. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, EA came out, and uh, the first thing they showed was Plants vs. Zombies, Garden Warfare, which looks like Team Fortress with Plants vs. Zombie characters. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> it, it, it looked quirky and fun. Oh, well, uh, you did expect for that sort of game. Mm-hmm. So. They did say it was coming to the 360 and Xbox One. They didn't make mention of the PS4 or uh, PC for this, though. Okay. Well, we'll see. Mm. Hopefully it does co- go multi-platform. I would hope so as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, another thing, uh, I don't have these notes in order, so <laughs> we're definitely not going them step by step. Uh, one of the bigger things they showed off, the Battlefield 4 multiplayer reveal. Which yeah. was actually pretty damn impressive. They had 64 people up on stage doing the demo. Wow. Yeah. And uh, one of the big things that they showed in this was uh, a squad going into a skyscraper, going up to the top, eventually parachuting off, landing on the ground, turning around and seeing the skyscraper fall down into the water. To blow up the skyscraper? Yeah. Sweet. It was just phenomenal. It actually got me kind of excited for Battlefield. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of scared to watch this, because that might make me go buy it. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if I need more games. <laughs> uh, and there was another little trailer right at the end that they showed, which uh, showed something pretty well, something that I would applaud uh, EA for. Wait, you would applaud EA for something? I know. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
We all know Call of Duty is getting a dog. That's their big thing. But EA with Battlefield 4, it looks like they're giving us female soldiers. You know, I'd say about freaking time, for one thing, because there are women in the Army. Exactly. Uh, and two, it feels a lot less gimmicky than the dog does. Exactly. Like, don't get me wrong. I love dogs. I am totally a dog person. But at the same time, do I need a dog in my Call of Duty game? No. Especially when I know what's going to happen. <laughs> like, you know the dog is going to die, and that's going to be the thing that tugs at the heartstrings of gamers. Mm -hmm. And I hate developers for doing that. Yep. You know? So, what, now we're going to get women in the game, and they're going to die, and that's going to tug at our heartstrings, too? <laughs> No, this feels a lot less gimmicky. It just feels like something that should have been included a while ago. So mm -hmm. good on EA and DICE for doing this. Exactly. Uh, of course, from EA, we got a lot more sports, sports, sports. They showed off the new Madden, the new FIFA. They the showed UFC. Out a, yep, the new U, uh, MMA. Or was it UFC? Uh, I think it's, it might have been MMA, but like They had Dana the White. They had Dana White there. Dana White's the UFC. Okay. Yeah. I know nothing of these things, so. And All they right. also showed that you, how they, ah, sorry, sorry, little, eh, nah, 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 nah. they also showed you how to handle your balls. Wait, what? Yeah. In I, NBA Live 2 oh, 2014. I can handle mine just fine, thank you. <laughs> I don't know, I don't need the Kinect spying on me to see that, but you know. <laughs> That was that was their big like promotion for the new NBA game. Improved ball handling. <laughs> Why do I find this so funny? <laughs> of course this caused Twitter to explode in EA, how to handle your ball. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a video game to tell me, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh they showed off the new Need for Speed game, which looks pretty good. And, what do you uh, do? Yeah, you'd need... expect from Need for Speed game. Mm-hmm. And, of course, uh, they also included in this a bit of uh, Need for Speed movie footage. Uh, I can't remember his real name now, but Jesse from Breaking Bad came on stage and... Oh, Aaron uh, Paul. Aaron Paul, thank you, came on and talked about it. Oh, neat. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they revealed the hero's car, his car for the movie. Can't remember what the hell that was now. But yeah, uh, looked okay. I was expecting him to say bitch a few times, but he yeah. did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, science. <laughs> uh, then, of course, the big thing, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. The EA's biggest thing, too, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. They showed a teaser trailer. Uh, it opened up with the DICE logo and showed first-person mode of somebody in, like, a snowy area getting up. And you can kind of hear a war feeling around him. Uh, he gets up, starts moving, then lasers. And you see a laser. And then a crashing... Oh, crap, what is it? Damn it, I forget what they're called. A crashing vehicle, the air vehicle. Yes. And then a giant foot. From an AT-AT. Exactly. Trailer ends. Logo. Battlefront. <laughs> it's I, about fucking time. Yeah, I freaked out when I saw that. <laughs> and they're doing, and Dice is doing it. Exactly. I mean, you. I mean, like you just talked about the battlefield. Uh, the new Battlefield multiplayer. If this is anything like that, only with Star Wars. Oh my God! Yes. Oh. And we talked about this too on our um, E3 predictions and everything. Yeah. And it came through. And it came true. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, it's been way too long, and Holy God, shit. I, I almost felt like hugging EA at this point. <laughs> it's been since 2005. Crap, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Like, EA finally doing something in the you right know, direction. 
getting a little ahead of myself here because we, we still have a few more things to discuss from EA, but I will say this. EA definitely did some good things this E3. Mm-hmm. And uh, I applaud them for actually listening to the gamers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's yet to be seen what restrictions will come with this. Yeah. But, but as, as, as far right as what, now, Yeah. As far as what they've unveiled to us. Squee! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, after this, well, we got a new, or actually not an A new, but the first trailer for Dragon Age Inquisition. Another thing that has me super stoked. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wasn't a fan of the second one, but... I enjoyed it to an extent. Mm-hmm. I thought, uh... I like the changes to the talking mode. Yeah. Like, I like that, the, the conversation wheel. I actually like the combat, too. I like that it was, you know, more responsive. Mm-hmm. Um, however, my biggest gripe about it was that you were always in the same areas. Yeah. Far too repetitive. Yeah. Had they combined the mechanics with the original, I would then it would have been spectacular, but... Mm-hmm. Hey, this is their chance to improve yet again. Yep. So. And the good news kept on going. Uh, well, before I get to that, they did show more info on Titanfall, which, okay, again, looks cool. But the last reveal that they showed, a game that people have been wanting for a long time, myself included, because I love the first one. Mirror's Edge 2 was revealed. Mm-hmm. So hyped, and it's using the Frostbite engine this time. And nice. it doesn't have the E-Harmony fucking look-alike cutscenes. Just, ah, oh, so happy. Ah, mm-hmm. oh, oh, just, yeah, thank you, EA. So, yeah. of course... The end of the trailer, and it said, coming when it's ready. <sighs> so, probably not till 2015 or beyond. Well, you know what? Let them take their time and make a good game. Mm-hmm. And EA, right now, saying it, no fucking guns this time. <laughs> Mirror's Edge does not need guns. It is not a FPS. It's an F P uh P <laughs> first person parkour. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Alright, well let's uh, move on to the next developer or sorry, publisher press conference. That was Ubisoft, who last year stole the show. Mm-hmm. And right off the beginning, the good thing for Ubisoft, they had Aisha Tyler back. Yeah. Who, my God, her jokes again this year were absolutely fantastic. And she wore a hashtag girlwood t-shirt the entire time. (laughs) Uh, Just to reference one of her jokes, um, nothing, or uh, what was it now? Uh, My mic kind of died there for a second, but don't worry, if it happens again, I'll scream at you. And there's nothing better than a big black woman screaming at you, especially when in bed. <laughs> uh, it was wonderful. But uh, they kicked off their press conference with uh, a little guitar playing. Rocksmith 2014 was announced. Uh, apparently Jerry Cantrell was there, uh, mm-hmm. the guitarist from Alice in Chains. Yep. Oh, that's neat. So, for those of you who like Rocksmith, a new version's coming in 2013. Yeah. Enjoy it. Mm. Rockers. Yep. Uh, one of the big reveals for Ubisoft this year was The Crew, which is a MMO need for speed type deal that's kind of like... Uh, Fast and Furious, to be honest with you. <laughs> oh, I love Fast and Furious. <laughs> but it, it looked pretty damn cool. I mean, they they showed a cinematic trailer first, and it was like, okay, bunch of 
cars, like, on the road, running away from cops, like, okay, they're doing a need for speed kind of rip off here. Okay, whatever. And then the cars cut off the road and into off-road territory. It's like, holy shit, they're, they're really expanding this. And uh, they eventually showed gameplay, which looked pretty damn cool, showing players, like, in various parts of the state. The whole map for the game is the United States from L.A. to New York and, like, various cities in between. So it's quite massive in scale. Mm. Uh, and I have to say, it looks pretty good. Pretty damn good. I'm definitely interested. Yeah, I... I mean, we've talked in the past, I'm not normally one who cares for racing game, but I guess about this one. Hmm. I mean, it's not a uh, straight-up racing game either. It's like... and that's exactly why I'm interested, because... Mm-hmm. Rather than just, you know, doing the usual, something different. Uh, yeah. You got all, like, the car yeah. customization options, and when I was watching it, the one thing that popped in my mind was, like, okay, aside from, like, all the stuff they're showing and what you can do, it'd be cool to just, like, get a bunch of friends together, say you start off in L.A. and be like, okay, here's the deal, race to New York doesn't matter which way you go, how you go about it, just whoever gets to New York first wins. I mean, that's pretty damn... I'd like to do that. Yeah, that would be cool. That is cool. So, yeah, the crew, definitely one to keep an eye on. For sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, Then they gave us a little bit of insight on South Park, the Stick of Truth. Finally. Uh, did you watch the small trailer for this? I didn't know. Oh, unfortunate. They had Randy in it. Mm. And he was uh, teaching the player in a kung fu outfit while in a bathroom. He's like, uh, teaching the Nagasaki fart. <laughs> because when you <laughs> when you use it on it, it's called the Nagasaki fart, because when you use it, it makes people go, ooh. <laughs> in like a Japanese voice, it was... <laughs> It, it was classic South Park. And then Cartman at the end was like, coming to you, holiday, coming to you this holiday. Or maybe not, maybe later, maybe sooner. You know how games work. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, South Park kind of got a release window, finally. Mm-hmm. I'm quite happy to uh, finally get my hands on that game. I did pre-order it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if it comes out in October, though, oh, god damn. Uh, <laughs> uh, they also revealed a, uh, new rabbit, r- rabbit, or, what, what the goddamn name is it? Or, rabbit. Rabbit. Yeah, rabbit's game. Uh, rabbit's invasion TV show announced, which is an interactive TV show. Cool. Our next game we're going to talk about is more interesting. And that's, uh, Just Dance 2014 was revealed. Was Toby there? <laughs> no, no. Oh, but I'm not interested. <laughs> uh, we also got to see a new Assassin's Creed trailer, followed by a gameplay trailer. And the game is continu- continually looking to be awesome. Lots of pirates and stuff. Yarrr. Sweet. Uh... They also revealed a new Trials game, actually two. Trials Fusion, which is coming to uh, sorry, the Xbox 360, the Xbox One, the PC, and the PS4. The first time a Trials game is coming to a Sony system. Nice. Yeah, I- I'm totally excited. I've always wanted to play Trials, but uh, still haven't picked up the version on PC yet, and I'm not buying Microsoft points, so uh, that's nice. And they also revealed Trials Frontiers, which is a mobile Trials game. Huh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. I'd rather see it come to the Vita or something, but yeah. okay. Uh, and then, once again, Ubisoft, they cannot go without a big surprise. And this year, 
they had a trailer starting off with a, a info on what was something called Dark Winter or Project Dark Winter, revealing a possible pandemic spread across the U.S. <laughs> due to Black Friday. And, Wait, uh, isn't Black Friday the day that all the, everything goes on sale? Yep. They were talking about like one person getting infected. Being out shopping on Black Friday, like oh. or whatever, being on the money and that money spreading to millions, or they call the disease <laughs> spreading to millions before like the first person would get their first symptom. Wow. And uh, yeah, their game is based off that. It takes place three weeks after Black Friday. No one will ever shop again. Mm. Uh, they went straight into a uh, gameplay demo showing a group of four group of five, I can't remember which. Group of three joined by a fourth person. Yes. So starts out as two, mm-hmm. they meet up with a third person, yep. and then a fourth one hops in and hops out. Yep. In a very interesting way. Yeah. Because you got three people playing on controllers, and another one playing on a tablet. Which I'm assuming could be the Vita as well on the PS4. Hmm. I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, it looked good, what they were showing. Right off the I, bat. Oh, I'm stoked for this game. It looked like, beautiful, too. Oh, I know. It looked amazing, and even the mechanics look good. Like, watching the bullets enter the way they, like, littered the vehicles and mm-hmm. went through the glass and stuff. Yep. I'm like, holy crap. Like, this... I was uncertain about how the next-gen games would look, but now I'm like, okay, yeah, that is a big step up. Mm-hmm. And it looked like it was playing on the PS4 as well, because they exactly. were using a uh, DualShock 4 controller. Yeah. But that's not the big thing revealed here, because it continued going on, and a warning came up. Incoming PvP. What? Encountering another group of players and getting into a firefight. Mm -hmm. The game scales out, showing the map, which looks massive in scale. Yeah. And it is a MMO third-person shooter. And then the title, Tom Clancy's The Division. Yeah. I mean, wow. I- oh. I'm definitely interested in this one. Oh, for sure. You know what? I'm not even mad that, like, Rainbow Six completely fell off the radar. Mm-hmm. I ain't even mad, bro. <laughs> That's what some people thought it was going to be, the next Rainbow Six, like, Patriots redone. Yeah. Nope, not that. Not Ghost Recon Future Soldier, which I was thinking it was. A brand yeah. a brand new IP. Or a, a brand new game in the Tom Clancy ID, anyway. Yeah. I'm glad for it. I'm, I, this looks really interesting. Mm-hmm. So this is for sure one that I'm definitely going to be watching. This is probably one of my top reveals of this year's E3. Mm-hmm. And kudos to Ubisoft for once again keeping this a surprise. Yeah, I don't think any of us saw that one coming, so... Nope. Uh, okay. Downside, they did not show Beyond Good and Evil 2, which... Fuck you, Ubisoft. And now, let's move on to the big one, which I know we're both excited for. Yeah. The Sony press conference. And... Well, they started off with some info for the PlayStation Vita. Uh, first and foremost, announcing that The Walking Dead is coming to the Vita in a bundle. Nice. But not only that, the bundle is going to include The Walking Dead 400 Days, the new Ooh. DLC episode that is coming out this summer. Nice. That's awesome. That got me excited very yeah. much. Uh, More of it, so... Then they went on to, uh, they said a few more games coming to the Vita, uh, God of War Collection, God of War 1 and 2 on the Vita now. Cool. Uh, Dead Nations coming to the Vita. Uh, in a montage, they showed Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate, which is looking great. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much all they talked about in regards to the Vita, which was kind of disappointing in a way. No Final Fantasy X still. Talk more about that. Hmm. 
Uh, going on from that, they moved into PS3 territory, getting that out of the way pretty quickly. Uh, they uh, showed off trailers for Beyond Two Souls, which looked incredible. Uh, despite the fact that it's a lot more action-y and kind of looked like Call of Duty in one way. Yeah. Uh, a new trailer for Puppeteer. Uh, they then announced a DT, or, uh, sorry, I never included in the notes here, but they had a new trailer for The Last of Us, which yeah. comes out this Friday, which I am so stoked for. Um, then they moved into third-party territory, starting off with GTA 5, revealing that there's going to be an exclusive PS3 bundle coming with a headset included. Cool. I mean, that's pretty damn sweet. And it's nice to see Rockstar and Sony kind of, you know, hugging each other again. Yeah. Um, and then they were showed off some more things for Batman Arkham Origins, which <laughs> 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 I, I love this because we are getting exclusive DLC for the PS3 version. Holy exclusive DLC, Batman. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, they showed off two costumes that we're going to get, or two skins, rather, costume skins, same thing. Uh, I forget what one of them was, because the second one was so damn awesome. We're getting Adam West Batman! <laughs> Batman. <laughs> no, it just needs to come with uh, the effects. Every time you punch an enemy, you get pow and smack come up on screen. Adam West mode. <laughs> Oh, people would love that. That'd be pretty fun. So that's cool. I mean, it's not much in regards to DLC, but it's cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, just awesome. They showed off a game. The gameplay trailer they showed sold me on the game. It is looking phenomenal. And you were skeptical, too. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't we all? Yeah. But not anymore. <laughs> yep. But then it's time to move into the PlayStation 4 stuff. Yay. And l let's just get the big stuff out of the way right off the bat. Let's talk about the console first, I think. Yes. They revealed the console, and it looks nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks like a gaming console. Yeah, it's, it's not my favorite design, but mm -hmm. at the same time, I've yet to see a console that get launched and be like, oh, that looks so cool right off the bat. Uh, <laughs> As so, one person mentioned in the chat I was on, it looks like a PS2 Slim Sandwich. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my one thing I did say is, you know, I'm not fully sure how I feel about the look of it, but I am glad that it does not look like a VCR. Yeah, and you can stand it up if you want to. Yeah. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And what about the price of that baby? Oh, the price. Everybody was speculating, oh, it's, well, it's going to be four ninety nine. With all they're doing, it's got to be higher, like five ninety nine or four fifty was the sweet spot people were talking about. No, it is three ninety nine. Wow. I was, I was shocked to hear that in, in an amazing way. Yeah, me too. I mean, it shows that Sony has learned their lesson big time. Oh, yeah. It looked like, I mean, when you consider that the PS3, it would be sold for 700 at launch. Mm -hmm. Well, 700 here in Canada, yep. 600 in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, I I kind of expected this to be a similar price, given exactly what they were including with it. But, well, yeah. We, it has been revealed afterwards that the PlayStation I is being sold separate for uh, 60 bucks. I think that's a big part of the thing is the fact that with the Xbox, you also have to buy the Kinect, mm -hmm. which is basically an extra 100 bucks right there. Mm -hmm. And kudos to Sony because not including the camera is showing that it, the PlayStation 4 doesn't need it, and they definitely don't want to stick a camera forcibly into your living room or bedroom. <laughs> Listen, I understand that they want to have cameras in my bedroom because that's where the magic happens. But, you know, not everyone needs to see that. 
Not everyone needs to see me practicing my magic tricks. Uh, uh, Jack Trenton, too, did an interview on uh, GT earlier today, and he was talking about that, too, and he was like, yeah, we have a eye camera, and for people who want to experience motion gaming, we're, we're going to have it, but we're not going to force it down anybody's throat. That's good. It's mm -hmm. good that it's there, but it's, you know, we don't need to, we don't need to buy into that gimmick, basically. Exactly, yeah. Uh, some other technical specs came out, too. It's going to have a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Which is up. Which is upgradable, yes. That's yeah. the big thing. So I wonder how big the games are going to be mm -hmm. with this next generation. So, I mean, that was one thing about my original PS3 was that it, uh, I had the 60 gig one, and I soon found my, once you started installing games, I found space running out on that thing very quickly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's great that Sony's allowing the hard drive to be removable and upgradable. Mm -hmm. And one of the bigger things I know a lot of my, well, one of my friends is excited about, it's region free too. So Yay. if you want to import games, you can. So that's another big seller for a lot of people. That's good. They're breaking down the walls. Mm -hmm. And speaking of breaking down the walls, the things that got the crowd into a standing ovation for Sony, and them chanting Sony's name at the press conference. Jack Trenton came out, as honest of a man that he is, the PlayStation 4 will support used games. <laughs> Which is, oh, I have to say, that almost had, that had me in tears of happiness, because Sony knows their market. They listened to the gamers. Yeah, that is a big thing, and uh, a decisive blow to Microsoft right there. Indeed, like, they trust the consumer, whereas Microsoft wants to put us on a leash. Like, we don't trust you, Sony. <laughs> Do whatever you want. <laughs> You have our support and trust. You're the gamer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The... Yeah. I mean, the sales are sold, like, on the first copies of the game. Like, when you buy a game, it's yours. It's your property to do what you want. Lend like, it to your friends. Exactly. Sell it off to your friends. Mm -hmm. Trade it in. Or keep it forever, like they said at the press conference. That was beautiful, and it continued on, like, they said that Sony will not have any DRM of any sort. No required online connectivity. Nice. And then one of the best pot shots at Microsoft, Jack Trenton stated, like, <laughs> the PlayStation 4 will not require online co connectivity checks, so you do not have to connect your system once every 24 hours. Yeah. That's, That's beautiful. Exactly. You also forgot to mention that it includes a headset. Oh, yes. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I was too excited. I'm sorry, but that's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, showing uh, that, yeah, they do want to uh, build their online community a lot more. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, Speak all of this, like, what we were just talking about, used games and everything, definitely... Kudos to Sony for coming out and addressing it directly. I, I think that, you know, following the last console generation, Sony has kind of realized that uh, they got off to a tough start last time. Mm -hmm. And they had a lot to recover from. So I kind of feel like this year, or well, this time around, they really decided to pay attention to what the gamers wanted mm -hmm. so that they could do it right from the start. Yep. Because let's face it, Sony, there were times when I was scared for Sony. Exactly, same yeah. here. But now, like after this, I'm, I'm just glad to be a Sony fan because it was, admittedly, it started to get tough for a little bit in around 2006, 2007. But yeah, we've come through it, and look at us now. Yeah, exactly. They have definitely turned in, into the best gaming company right now, the mm -hmm. most respected and loved, anyway. Mm -hmm. So. Keep it up, Sony. Keep doing the great job you're doing. Uh, 
now that we've got that out of the way, let's move into some of the other stuff here. Uh, they also announced that, hey, Sony Pictures is going to produce PlayStation-exclusive content. So, <laughs> suck on that, Microsoft. We're doing it, too. <laughs> it didn't take a full fucking 30 minutes to say it. <laughs> nope. It was like five minutes. We're Sony Pictures. We're going to do content. Console, it's going to have Netflix, and I don't think they said Hulu, but they said Crackle and uh, the Sony Music thing. Cool. It's all coming. So, yeah, we're doing it. We're not going to waste your time telling you how great it is, because you already <laughs> know. Chances are we already have Netflix, so I'm not <laughs> going to tell you what Netflix is and show you how it works on your console. Mm -hmm. Because I guarantee you, Netflix will be the same everywhere you go. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then we got the... Uh, well, right at the end, we got new details on uh, PlayStation Plus. Yeah, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost, membership transfers over from PS3 to PS4, so your one membership works on both systems and the PlayStation Vita. Awesome. That, that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, it is now required for online play, but I'm fine with that. You know what? When I first heard that... Like, one of my friends on Facebook, he's a Microsoft fan, mm -hmm. and he had commented saying, well, it looks like, you know, Sony's starting to take a page from Microsoft's book and start charging for it. Mm -hmm. And initially I was a little disappointed because that has always been something that I've held against Microsoft, yeah. was having to pay for online. Mm -hmm. However, when you consider that this is for PlayStation Plus, mm -hmm. and I know you, and <laughs> you consistently talk about all the great free stuff that you get from mm -hmm. your PS Plus membership, all the cool perks, you know, getting into betas early and getting mm -hmm. free trials early, free games, discounts. Inclu including XCOM Enemy Unknown today. Yeah. I mean, not to mention you also got Deus Ex as well as Spec Ops and Saints Row. Mm -hmm. I mean, fuck. Like I said, Sweet. Now I have an excuse to finally get PS Plus. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've always been putting it off because I don't need it. Hey, now I need it. Okay. There. <laughs> <laughs> no more excuses. Yeah. I guess I have to get and enjoy these free games with my online play. Yeah. I don't mind at all. I really don't. So. Yeah. And that's exactly. It's only the online play. It's not restricting apps either. If you want to watch Netflix and you don't have PlayStation Plus, you can do so. Sony yeah. is not going to charge PlayStation Plus in order you, for you to watch the uh, extra features that you subscribe to. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And, I remember... Uh, oh, sorry, go on. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, they're also still going to give out free games, which, right at launch, uh, Drive Club PlayStation Plus Edition. Ooh. That is amazing. A launch title... Triple A exclusive for free right off the bat. So they did say plus edition, so I'm sure there's going to be restrictions onto it. But still, that's, that's pretty damn sweet. That's basically like a free trial of the game, essentially. Mm. I mean, I'm not a racing fan, but oh, you bet I'm going to download this and try it out. Mm -hmm. I'll make sure my PS Plus is set up before I get my PS4. Oh, so sure. there you go. Hey, get it soon, and we can both play. Uh, Saints Row. True. Well, I might wait so longer. <laughs> <laughs> Money. <laughs> hey, it's still cheaper than Xbox Live. I know. There's a reason I don't have Xbox Live. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why should I have to pay to use my Netflix when I already pay for my Netflix? Mm-hmm. Anyways. Uh, yep, let's uh, move on with the uh, games. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, they kind of started off with back-to-back-to-back-to-back uh, to back to back to back trailers for uh, the titles that they already revealed. Uh, we got to see Killzone, Infamous, Second Son, Drive Club, and Knack again, all of which are looking great. Killzone has a forest now. <laughs> I actually didn't watch the Killzone trailer. Ooh, Despite the fact that I'm very excited for it, I didn't watch it. Mm -hmm. You got to after the uh, podcast recording. I, and I will. And we both should get it on launch day. Oh, well, there's no doubt in, mind that, in my mind that uh, Killzone is one of the launch titles I'll be picking up. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And we got to see the new game by Sony Santa Monica. The Order 1886, which uh, we kind of mentioned on the podcast a while back. Yeah. And this one's looking kind of neat. Looks interesting. The setting for it and every, the gameplay and everything. Mm-hmm. So it's great to see a brand new IP coming from a Sony, a great Sony studio. Mm-hmm. Same studio behind God of War. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also got to see the Dark Sorcerer reveal trailer, which was, it started off going like, Quantic Dream is making a sorcery-based game or like fantasy-style game. And then it kind of threw us all for a loop, which was, in a way, incredibly funny. You didn't watch this one, did you? No. <laughs> I only I only went to IGN and looked at their homepage, and I guess I must have missed this one. Oh, okay. I'm going to look it up, though, after, because it's Quantic Dream. Mm -hmm. it, it was really, really amusing. And uh, let's just say it involved the... Uh, the old man's face that we saw back in February. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, then after this, the, one of the big things, in my opinion, that Sony did, they showcased their love for the indie developer. And this started off in a big way. A big, big way. They brought on stage the guys who made Bastion and revealing that their next game, Transistor, is coming first on the PlayStation 4. That's huge. Very huge. The fact that it'll be coming to the PS4 before the PC, mm -hmm. that's a very big thing. Well, I, console, uh, console anyway. Oh, okay. So, before oh. the Xbox One, anyway. My mistake, I misinterpreted. Uh, no worries. Then, uh, after this, uh, <laughs> they had, one, two, three, four, five, six, well, they had very, like, eight screens, uh, I think. Yeah, eight screens on stage, like, apart from their main one. And each one, one by one, started to light up as they uh, went into talking about other indie developers. They revealed secret ponchos. They revealed don't starve. Which I've, heard. Is, uh, I've heard great things, too. Yeah, no, I was just about to say that. <laughs> Uh, which they also revealed in the PlayStation Plus thing, is coming free to PlayStation 4 via PS Plus. Oh, wow. Yep. Uh, they revealed Raise the Dead, which uh, was a little bit amusing when they announced them, because uh, the guy was like, these guys didn't think we were going to talk to them, so we put them on stage. <laughs> <laughs> this one I love. They revealed Octodad, Deadliest Catch, coming to the PlayStation 4. <laughs> which, which, that's just great. Uh, they revealed the horror game, Outlast, which is a first-person survival horror. Uh, they revealed Mercenary Kings, which I am very excited for. Which I'm sure everybody has seen in every Canuck podcast that's gone up, because... I use one of the avatars from the game that I got from backing the project, <laughs> which I use for you as well, Big Boss. That's where those came from. I figured as much. So I'm very excited for Mercenary Kings. I can't wait to get it and start doing videos on it. Uh, it's from the guys who made Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, the game, so very hyped for it. Uh, they also revealed the Abe's Odyssey remake, Oddworld, new and tasty. Nice. Which, which that got a massive applause. And uh, they finally revealed uh, Galak Z, which is a uh, shooter type game, which kind of looks cool and got a great applause as well. Nice. But Good I, love for the indie developers. Indeed. Sony nice is embracing them so much. Nice to see them making their home with my gaming system of choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, compared to Micro Microsoft, has one indie developer, I think, in their entire show, aside from, like, just revealing Minecraft again. So, yeah, Sony definitely one-up them in this department. And yeah. I've been watching some, like, footage on GT, and they were talking, like, that the 
members there were talking, like, if you talk to an indie developer and you mention the PS4, their eyes just light up in happiness. <laughs> so, Sony continuing to do the right things and great things. Uh, now, going on to another reveal that has both of us excited. I do yes, it does. <laughs> it does. I mean, we've given shit to Square a lot over the past few years for, you know, Final Fantasy thirteen, thirteen two, Lightning Returns. <laughs> Even the uh, first launch of Final Fantasy fourteen. Mm -hmm. But they came on that eight on stage, but they had a little video package done up for Sony. Final Fantasy Versus 13 is not dead. Nope. It's just been rebranded. Yep. They showed a trailer, and right at the end, when they had the logo for Versus 13, they were like, the future is, or something like this anyway, the future is constantly changing. <laughs> now, for the 15th anniversary, boom, logo explodes. Final Fantasy 15. Yeah. Yep. And what they showed of the game looks amazing. I really like the look, well, not only the graphical look and the design of everything, but the combat, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I was worried, you know, that we'd get more shitty FF13-style combat. Yeah. I mean, well, this isn't going to be, you know, back the ATD style of, you know, Final Fantasy VII and mm, those ones. Not. Uh, but at least the combat looks basically like Kingdom Hearts, which yes. is definitely not a bad thing. No, not at all. And that leads us into our next thing. What? Yeah. This is probably the thing that had me crying for a little bit. <laughs> uh, they were like, and then we have... One more thing to show you. Disney logo pops up on screen. Then they start showing Kingdom Hearts 1, and you got all the things popping up. It's like, okay, this is just going to be a trailer for Kingdom Hearts 1.5. But then you see Birth by Sleep pop up there. And then a logo. Kingdom Hearts 3. Finally. Yes. Like, it's been over ten years now we've been waiting for this. Ten years? I think so. No. It's, no. it's got to be at least that. No, it was 2006. 2006 was Kingdom Hearts 2? I'm pretty sure. 2005, 2006. I'm well, going to search that up. Well, we're probably going to be waiting ten years anyway, but... The fact of the matter is that it's True. been confirmed and it's in development. And oh my... Like, honestly, Square, I think, just earned back their fan base with this. <laughs> Launched in 2005. Okay, my bad. So yeah, still incredible. Just mm -hmm. incredible. And we got to see a little bit of gameplay, or a trailer anyway. Which, oh, oh, man. Oh, it makes me even more excited for the uh, HD edition to come out so I can start getting through those games again. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Get that out, then get Kingdom Hearts 2 HD edition, and then we'll be all ready for Kingdom Hearts 3. Mm-hmm. Just, oh, so good. And it was revealed earlier, earlier today that both Final Fantasy 15 and Kingdom Hearts 3 are coming to the Xbox One as well. But yeah. who cares? We're getting them. That's yeah. the main thing. And we're getting yeah. them on PlayStation 4. And that wasn't the only thing they sh told us either. No. One more thing. Mm -hmm. And that's Final Fantasy fourteen is also coming to the PlayStation 4. <laughs> which means, but, Big Boss, you got to buy it again. I know, for the third time. <laughs> Probably. Not. That, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, the cool thing is that, I mean, it's actually completely cross-platform. Yep. So, I mean, I can play my my character on the PC or on my PS3 or on my PS4. Mm-hmm. As long as I buy each version of the game. Yep. So, that's kind of neat. Um, 
a little nice. frustrating that, you know, right after I pre-order the collector's edition, <laughs> this goes out and happens. And I swear to God, if this has a collector's edition as well, <laughs> with even more stuff, I'm going to be kind of pissed. But if this just hey, comes come out at... Hey, come on now. I think Metal Gear Solid 4 has proven that you will buy things again and again. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid 4? Or, well, the Metal oh, Gear Solid yeah. HD collection. No, no, the best yet is Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. <laughs> I thought that they had sold out of the limited edition version, yeah. so I bought the regular one. But then I found the limited edition version somewhere, and I bought that. And then they released it on Blu-ray, so I bought that too. <laughs> I have three copies of Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. <laughs> okay, then. Yeah. Uh, let's keep moving here. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we could talk about Final Fantasy Kingdom Hearts for an entire podcast, really. We, we, we could, but let's not. No, we'll save that for a Final Fantasy special at some point. Um, moving on, uh, there was some info on Diablo 3. Uh, the PS3 and 4 versions will get special Uncharted and Journey-themed items, plus more to come in the future. Cool. That's neat. Um, Watch Dogs and Assassin's Creed 4 got shown off. Gameplay footage for both of them. Both games continually to look amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we knew beforehand, both games are getting exclusive content for the PS3 and 4. Mm -hmm. uh, the Elder Scrolls Online got announced that it's coming to the PlayStation 4 and will be the first version to get access to the beta. Nice. we we'll have to make sure to get in on that. Mm, me too. I mean, depending on the uh, subscription fee, which I'm sure is to follow, but, hell, I am so happy the game is coming to consoles. Mm -hmm. uh, makes it much easier to play <laughs> than on PC, because I'm sure my PC would not be able to handle this even though it's pretty good. Well, it maybe could handle it. Um, then they had a uh, big reveal for uh, Mad Max coming to the PlayStation 4 from the same developers who gave us Just Cause 2. The perfect developer to do a Mad Max game. Mm-hmm. And if those uh, tease screenshots that we saw in the past is any indication, the game's just going to be as crazy as Just Cause. Nice. Hopefully they put multiplayer into it this time. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally at the end, if, you know, they didn't take enough pot shots at Microsoft already, they once again bring up the Bungie guys on stage and show off Destiny, the first gameplay footage. Mm-hmm. And I don't know about you, Big Boss, but... I'm definitely interested in Destiny now. Uh, I am too. Uh, the gameplay didn't completely blow my mind or anything. Mm -hmm. Not the way that, uh, you know, watching uh, The Division did. Mm -hmm. But it definitely has me excited for the game. I'm Chances are I'll be picking it up. I mean, I like Bunchy's work on the Halo franchise, so I already look forward to this. Mm-hmm. to see what comes about mm -hmm. with Destiny. Totally excited for it. And that pretty much wraps up the uh, PlayStation 3 news. Yep. So let's move on to Nintendo, who didn't have an E3 press conference, and uh, we'll soon tell you the reasons why they didn't have one. <laughs> uh, right off the bat, this was disappointing. It was 40 minutes of Crap. <laughs> uh, they started off showing new info on Pokemon X and Y, which I am getting and I am excited for, but um, they showed off a new mode for the game, how you can interact with your Pokemon with the mm -hmm. touch screen. Oh. Showing stuff like patting Pikachu's head. Congratulate and feeding them. So, congratulations, you people out there. You can now molest your Pokemon. Uh. <laughs> and they also showed off, or revealed, rather, the new Pokemon type. Okay. The fairy type. 
But we already have like Clefairy and Clefable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actual fairy type. Lame. Yeah, and yeah, it's what Edie that uh, new Edie that was shown up. Frick, we don't need more Edies. Type. We don't need more Edies. <laughs> Five was enough. <laughs> Three was enough. Umbreon and Espeon are kind of cool, so I'll let that slide. <laughs> um, they moved in showing the new 3D Mario game. It's kind of a sequel to 3D Mario Land, which came out on the 3DS, and it looks like it should belong on the 3DS. Uh, it's going to have four-player co-op, though. Cool. Which, uh, they're actually drawing back from the cast from Super Mario Bros. 2, which is kind of neat. So you have Mario, you have Peach, who can hover again, uh, Luigi, and Toad in the game. So that's kind of neat. But their uh, big thing about the game was uh, the new power-up. Mario and friends can now turn into a cat. Wow. They have a cat costume. And I don't. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> and for the uh, logo for the game, it actually has a cat tail. Oh dear God! <laughs> but the one thing I was looking at was like Mario turned into a cat, and he's yellow. Okay. The one neat thing I saw about this power up is uh, when you go to jump onto the flight pole at the end of the level, uh, if you miss the top and you like you hit like the bottom or midway. The cat will actually run up the pole. Okay. So, kind of neat, but, uh, yeah. So, for you furry lovers out there, the Mario oh. King coming for you. Yeah, furries. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, they showed uh, new footage from the new Mario Kart. Uh, Mario Kart 8 was announced. You can now drive on walls. That's crazy. <laughs> That's like some F-Zero stuff right there. <laughs> Quite honestly, not that impressive. No. It looked like an HD version of uh, Mario Kart 7 that came out on the 3DS. Hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Though it is Mario Kart, so I'm sure it'll be fun multiplayer. Oh, yeah. Uh, moving on, they had some details on Wii U Fit and Wii U Party, and it's coming in 2014. It got, those two games got delayed. <laughs> uh, Big Boss, I kind of hear myself in the background there right now. Oh. I don't know how. <laughs> okay. Because I'm on, you're on a headset with me. Yep. Hmm. Okay, never mind. It shows up on the audio. Hashtag oh. deal with it. Uh, <laughs> uh, moving on from that, they revealed Art Academy U Wii U Edition coming, which, okay, yay, don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. And then they confirmed that 14 third-party games are headed to the Wii U and 3DS, which includes Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, Batman Arkham Origins, Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate, Deus Ex Human Revolution Director's Cut, Disney Infinity, Just Dance 2014, Rayman Legends, Scribblenauts Unmask, Disney Planes, because everybody's excited for that one, mm. Shin Megami Tensai 4, which I'm actually really excited for, <laughs> uh, Skylander Swap Force, which will sell millions of copies, and annoy parents to no end. Splinter Cell Blacklist, which is, you know, really surprising. Yeah. Uh, Sonic Lost World, which, you know, that still boggles my mind right now, having grown up in the days when Sega and Nintendo were fighting at each other, to now see Nintendo in, ex in an exclusive partnership with Sega for three Sonic games. And finally, Watch Dogs, which... Quite frankly, I'm really excited to see how Watch Dogs is going to play on the Wii U. 
I think the Wii U would be a great console to play it on, personally. Mm -hmm. uh, if they do it right. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it, it could be a great console to do it on. Which, I mean, it's quite possible. Ubisoft did a great job with a Zombie U, from what I've been told. Yeah, I haven't heard too much about that, so I can't say much. <laughs> uh, moving forward, they get, they did a little spotlight on the Wii U eShop, uh, showing off some of the games coming to it. Uh, Ballpoint Universe, Cloudberry Kingdom from Ubisoft and Penny. Uh, the first one was from Arachnoid, Arachnoid Games. Uh, Cozy Crazy. Coaster Crazy Deluxe from Frontier Developments. DuckTales Remastered <laughs> from Capcom and WayForward. Sorry, I, ju I just light up every time I see that name mentioned somewhere. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons Chronicles of Mysteria from Capcom. Oddworld, new and tasty, is coming to the Wii U. Uh, Scram Kitty and his buddy on rails from Deco Deco. Shovel Knight, which actually looks really good, from Yacht Club. Spin the Bottle, Bumby's Party, from Nap Knock Games. World of Keflings, from Ninja Bee. And Mutant Muds Deluxe, from Renegade Kid. Hmm. Now, as much flack as we give Nintendo, that what they're doing and everything... At least, like Sony, they are supporting indie developers. Oh, exactly. So, kudos to you, Nintendo. Keep up the work on the Wii U. At mm. least when it comes to uh, indie developers. Mm -hmm. Just improve on your actual fucking games. <laughs> Anyways, uh, going on from that, they uh, had new footage and details on Wind Waker HD. The game is looking beautiful. As you'd expect from that game. Mm-hmm. I've actually never played Wind Waker HD myself. I would hope you haven't played the HD version yet. <laughs> okay, sorry. I haven't played the original <laughs> Wind Waker. <laughs> I played it a bit at a friend's place. Um, and, yeah, it was, I mean, the cell shading design and stuff, the cartoony look was really bright and colorful, so I can only imagine how good it would look in HD. Mm-hmm. Uh, the wonderful 101 multiplayer was, uh, detailed in more, uh, detail. <laughs> the game is looking cool. It's from Platinum Games, and, uh, to be honest, it kind of looks like Pikmin, but superheroes. That's cool. Uh, after that, uh, Retro's new game was revealed. Everybody was excited, it's like, what's coming? Is it going to be Star Fox? Is it going to be Metroid? Is it going to be F-Zero, maybe? No. It's going to be Donkey Kong Country, Tropical Freeze. Now, as much as I'm disappointed that we're not getting, like, one of those other three games, I'm quite happy with the new Donkey Kong Country. I figured it would be. <laughs> Come on, it's one of the best series ever. <laughs> I still need to pick up Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D, though. Damn it, might have to do that now, one day soon. <laughs> um, after that, we got new trailer and details for blank. Fuck, what was I going to put there? <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! I know, I, I see that, I'm just like, okay. <laughs> uh, so let me just check IGN here for a second. Folks, uh, Big Boss entertain the people. I could talk about the next subject. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, it was also shown a Bayonetta 2 trailer, as well as gameplay. Which I didn't fully expect. Um, Did you watch that? No, I didn't watch anything from Nintendo's. <laughs> I don't own a Wii U. I don't need to watch this. <laughs> Mind you, I don't own a PS4 either, so I don't know what my logic is there. <laughs> I can't find it. I can't remember what I was going to say there, so let's screw it. Uh, as for Bayonetta, the great thing about that when they were announcing it was um, when we last showed Bayonetta, we only showed her from the back. It's like, that's a bad thing? 
thing. <laughs> <laughs> so now you get to see her from the front. And uh, the trailer that they showed her right off the bat started with crotch cam. <laughs> <laughs> A direct shot of looking up at Bayonetta when she had her legs spread with two guns down. So, more sexual than what we would expect from Nintendo, for sure. Oh, my. <laughs> I'm definitely interested in Bayonetta 2. I love the first game. Uh, I, yeah. Uh, she now has a new hairdo, shorter hair. <laughs> it looks good, and the gameplay they showed looked pretty damn awesome, too. Sweet. Still, it's only going to be on the Wii U. That's interesting. But of all games, that is their exclusive. Hmm. Yeah, well, they've got to do more than that to sell people. Agreed. Uh, the biggest thing they didn't do in this uh, direct was announce a price cut, which the Wii U needs. Desperately. Mm -hmm. Especially now with the PlayStation 4 coming out only $50 more. <laughs> For a next-gen console? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the big thing really came at the end. Uh, the new trailer for Smash Brothers! And it started off with a uh, letter dropping down in the uh, Animal Crossing Village. And the trailer begins. It shows uh, the first art for uh, Mario, showing him kind of cell shaded a bit more. They go into gameplay, and it's like they're fighting. It kind of looks like dumbed down and whatnot. But it makes sense, because this is the 3DS version of Smash Brothers. So I get to play it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they do that, then Mario goes into HD mode. And the fighting really begins, and I think it was Pit he was fighting against in, like, a uh, boxing arena sort of deal. But this was all CGI now. Okay. Mario goes back against the ropes, and the villager from Animal Crossing appears and puts a net over Mario. Then we go into a montage of uh, the villager actually fighting people. <laughs> Which, I mean, that was pretty cool. That was actually pretty awesome that they got Animal Crossing now involved in the Smash Brothers series. Uh, the trailer goes on like this, and it kind of wraps up, showing, like, Animal... Uh, Smash Brothers logo, and it splits into two, showing 3DS version and Wii U version. The trailer starts to go black, and then incoming challenger, or a new challenger approaches. You get to see another CGI section with uh, Mario, Zelda, uh, Samus, and Kirby all turning and looking up at a rock. Camera pans over to the rock. Everything's dark. You see a figure standing up there. It looks like a little boy. And then... Doo -doo -doo. Looks up. Mega Man! The music starts playing it. Oh, man. Finally, we're getting Mega Man in Smash Brothers. Long overdue. Very long overdue. And it's not any ord ordinary Mega Man. It's the original NES Mega Man, too. I, yeah, even despite the fact that this little Nintendo Direct was pretty crappy, this announcement was awesome. I think you're forgetting a trainer. Hmm? Oh, think... yes. Well, <laughs> this wasn't really announced in the Nintendo Direct. This came uh, afterwards in their uh, little develop developer showcase. Uh, actually, I only literally saw that, like, moments before I tweeted it. Uh, they revealed another character in the game. The Wii U Fit Trainer. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I mean, if Nintendo wanted to compete with Mortal Kombat in putting in a character that was probably lamer than mocap... Mocap. <laughs> you have done it, Nintendo. So, despite the fact that I think it's horribly stupid... It's funny at the same time. 
Because you basically have this animated mannequin now in the game. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's the new Smash Brothers game. Nothing to say, Big Boss? <laughs> not really, no. I didn't watch this, and uh, I'm not too interested. I mean, I like the Smash Bros. franchise, but... Nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if they drop the price of the Wii U and actually put out some other, you know, good stuff for it, first-party titles especially, I'd consider getting a Wii U as my secondary console. Yeah. I mean, hey, I'm not ruling out to ever getting a Wii U, I'll say that much. So, mm -hmm. it has it's just at this moment, exactly, at this moment, there's just not enough for me to justify it still. Mm -hmm. So, if I did have one, Smash Bros. would be something I would certainly be looking forward to. Mm -hmm. But you can always go to 3DS and get the 3DS version. Oh, I don't need another handheld. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, folks, was the, uh, the, all the developer conferences. So, uh, Big Boss, uh, what are your overall thoughts? Hello? Oh, hold on. He's uh, AFK there for a second, folks. So I uh, guess I can entertain you for a second uh, with my own opinions. Uh, overall, it was a great E3. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, I mean, everybody kind of had something to get excited for, except for Microsoft, in my opinion. Yay, they got some neat-looking games coming, but the Microsoft showings that I was interested in, they're coming to uh, the P PS4 anyway, Witcher 3 and uh, Metal Gear Solid 5, so not really that excited there. EA had Star Wars Battlefront, so I'm totally excited for that one. Uh, and Mirror's Edge 2 made me really excited as well. Ubisoft... I am really interested in the division and the crew. It was also nice to get a little more info on South Park. Sony just went it all around for me. Great games, great support for the indie developers, great price point for the PS4, and a great consumer-friendly attitude. They listen to the gamers, which I love. So, uh, yeah, those are my overall thoughts on the shows. Uh, Big Boss, what about yourself? Um, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, my overall thoughts on all the shows, pretty much the same as yours. <laughs> Microsoft, I think they had a couple games that looked interesting, um, but they didn't give me enough reason to say, yeah, I can support this console. They will have to do a lot more to win me over, especially when... You know, they revealed more stuff that they just are going to keep doing their own thing and not care about the rest of us. So, overall, Microsoft, that's a letdown. Mm -hmm. um, actually, somebody posted a picture about Halo 4? Or no, what the new upcoming Halo. And uh, it basically said, it's nothing against you, it's just your parents. <laughs> <laughs> And that basically sums it up. <laughs> I'd love to play the new Halo. I would, but I'm sorry if that's the system it's on. I don't think I can do that. <laughs> um, as for EA, surprisingly, yeah, they had a very solid conference, which uh, given our track record with EA and the amount we bashed them, I did not expect. Um, that Battlefront thing just completely, like, yeah... I love that. Complete I'm, orgasm. Oh, totally. I've been waiting for that game forever. And I've been talking with my friends about how awesome, a, you know, a current, well, you know, a PS3 battle front would be. And now if we find out this is going to be coming to the PS4 and that, like, it's going to even be even better than I imagined. So I can't wait. The Dragon Age Inquisition. I love the Dragon Age franchise, so I'm super, super, super stoked for that too, as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, then Ubisoft, the crew sounds really interesting. I'm going to have to look it up and uh, find out a little bit more about it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Assassin's Creed is what it is. 
And then The Division was a great surprise from Ubisoft. That really caught us all off guard, and uh, I am, that's probably another one of my top games from this year's E3. Mm-hmm. Now for Sony. Let's see, what can I complain about? Um, <laughs> they didn't give us that Final Fantasy VII remake. <laughs> uh, no, all, all joking aside, Sony gave me very little reason to complain. With, like you said, an excellent price point for the PS4. Listening to their gamers, um, all the specs are just great. The fact that they're not forcing us to use the PS- PlayStation I, you know, use games... An upgradable hard drive, region-free gaming, that's cool. Uh, the PlayStation Plus, I'm perfectly okay with that. I, I'm looking forward to it. And the games as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, holy crap, Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy XV, um, even Elder Scrolls Online. Like, I did not expect that. And now that is, damn it, now i got to decide between Final Fantasy XIV and that. <laughs> You know, one of my versions of Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> um, and then finally getting a little bit of info on Destiny, a little bit more than just a trailer. That's pretty sweet. As for Nintendo, I mean, to be frank, none of that grabs me. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, Smash Bros. could be cool. The Wind Waker HD edition, also cool. But other than that, no. Nothing that says I need to get this, especially when, you know, so many of those games are already coming to the other systems, like Assassin's Creed, Batman, other Batman, um, Watch Dogs, Splinter Cell Blacklist. Uh, so, yeah, sorry Nintendo, but you still have failed to win me over. <laughs> However, for Nintendo fans, I think they had a pretty solid conference. Mm-hmm. And uh, That's the thing, though. I've talked to some fans of the series and uh, are fans of Nintendo, and they're like, I can't find a reason to defend Nintendo right now. Well, I'll just say that it's a better conference than Xbox. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I mean. Um, uh, the, the big disappointment, though, is like most of these games that they announced and talked about, they're coming in 2014. Yeah, nothing really to look forward to this year. No, uh, they said that Donkey Kong Country was coming out this year, and so was uh, the new Mario game. But aside from that, like, Smash Brothers is 2014, and probably is going to be late 2014. Yeah, I'd guess as much. So, yeah, that's the problem with Nintendo right now. They've got nothing coming. Yeah. Really. And if like they think said. Pikmin's going to... Okay, sorry. Uh, if they think that Pikmin's going to hold them over for a long time... Yeah. Yeah. Like we said, they have a lot of potential. Mm-hmm. They're just not really using it yet. So, yeah, that uh, pretty much sums it up. And, uh, <laughs> well, if it wasn't obvious, um, who won E3 this year? EA. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all joking aside, while EA certainly didn't, lo- didn't lose E3, I definitely think uh, that Sony comes out on top decisively. Mm-hmm. Yep. They listen to the fans. Yeah. I'd, I'd rank them, you know, Sony with the best, then EA and Ubisoft afterwards, then Nintendo, and lastly, uh, Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would do the same. So, uh, guys, uh, that's going to wrap up this special edition of the Canuck Podcast. Uh, we could be back again Sunday night slash Monday for a uh, regular scheduled episode because there's going to be more news to come this week. I mean, we only covered games here. We've got movie news to go over, TV show news to go over, comic book news. So, until then, Big Boss, please do as you always do and take us out. Well, boys and girls, there you have it. Thanks for tuning in to this very special E3 edition of the Canuck Podcast. We've had a blast recording this and discussing our anticipation for all the upcoming games and consoles, and we hope that you've enjoyed it and are as excited as we are. 
I'm Ben Big Boss, and with me, as always, is... Lord X. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time. Goodbye, everybody. Oh, man, we got to wait another year for E3. Oh...